Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you two separate products. They're each small, so I figured I would just bundle them together. They came out at the same time from Mega Constructs' Destiny the Game line. On the left over here is the Avalon Courser Sparrow set, which comes with a female warlock and also a Red Legion war beast. And on the right is the Gallerwing Sparrow, or you can call it Gallerwing, you can call it Gallerwing. I don't care how you pronounce it, we all know what it is. It comes with a, a Titan and also a Hobgoblin. Let's look at this one on the left first. Avalon Courser is a relatively recent Sparrow, even though it does use the original SRL sort of design. It's a Curse of Osiris, if I'm not mistaken, specific legendary Sparrow, and obviously Mega already had the molds to make these SRL style ones, and they just did a pretty nice job here of, of setting up the prints with the paint applications on the fins on the front and the rear, and also going across the nose there, and notice the nose piece is printed on the top and on each side. So three paint applications to that one on three different surfaces. Uh, overall, I mean, this isn't that great of a Sparrow. I don't think that a lot of people will really be looking forward to it. It is nice to have that little bit of nostalgia if you've used this type of Sparrow for a long time, going back into Destiny 1. But uh, I, just, I just don't think it's you know one of the more memorable ones. It does look pretty, though. It has nice colors if you like the, the blue hues used here. This is also a print back here on the on the tail. And otherwise, it's done just the same as all the ones that they've done up to this point that are based on this same design. And it comes with the stand and you can lean that. You can kind of adjust that to let you go into a, a leaning pose very, very easily. So yeah, it, it, it works out and makes for a nice display item. The Warlock, like I said, is a female, has the female torso and also the female specific armor, the main body armor to go with that, the, the top piece there. And this is set up with the Ikora uh, set. Uh, you can also see it as your, your default set from the beginning of the campaign. This is a, an armor set that I actually want to get in game, but I really don't want to do the work to earn it. I don't want to do the meditations. Maybe eventually I'll do it. I have held on to my original broken helmet from the beginning of the game just as a little nostalgia item. The reason that I haven't attached the right foot there to the, the temporary base that I'm using is that it is very slightly malformed. It's just a little bit too tight and wants to pop the foot up so I mean, it's it's really really slight i just need to shave that out a little bit but i didn't want to hide the fact that there was a malformed part here the weapon is almost exactly what i'm using as my as my main secondary weapon or energy weapon on my main warlock uh, but it's not exactly it, it's it's almost exactly this is supposed to represent solemn him and it has the viced poison shader on it I use Galliard 42, which is almost the same thing, and with the exact same shader on it. So that's definitely going to work for me if I ever get around to setting up a signature figure. It's too bad we get just a plain, uh, plain ghost with this one, though. I think everything else is done as far as how it's designed is, is pretty good, but plain, white, standard, original style ghosts, I think, kind of need to, to go away. Doggy! <laughs> That's a cute doggy. It's a good doggy. Ah, the war beasts. Gotta kill them. Gotta kill lots and lots and lots and lots of them, especially on that one strike. But, uh, it's still a doggy. And there's something still cute about them, no matter how horrible they are, no matter how scaly and dragon like their skin, no matter how reptilian they are. No matter how annoying they are, uh, something I, I still like about them. Mega has done a great job of, of capturing the skin here, and this thing does have a lot of uh, fairly matte colored uh, uh, just wash applied to most of it, including the face to get in there and pull out some of the detail in the teeth. But the wash goes over the entire body, which really helps the scales to show up. Now, some of the some of the printing, some of the masking of the printing, especially with the silver, is not all that great here, uh, around around the size of the toes and everything. But we are looking at this up pr 
pretty close. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the look of this thing. Its range of motion is okay. You can rotate the head around. It's on a, a, uh, a ball joint. It's a little bit sticky there, but you know, you can get kind of the, the looks that you want out of that. The, the arms slash legs are able to go back and forth and you can also kind of splay the front ones. You got the two axes of motion there. The kind of claws have bar shaped holes in them or in indentations. So you can, at least at the front, so you can attach those to bar shaped things. And then at the back you have anti studs so you can put that onto any sort of, of plate. So they give you good options for attaching it to things and the rear legs are just attached with ball joints so relatively limited motion there but still stuff that you can do and i think yeah again i think they look pretty good and you know if if you have it on a studded base you can get it into kind of a, a pouncing pose pretty easily but i can also i believe i can get this to balance let me get it and magic of editing no <laughs> I was not able to get it to pose on just three legs on flat ground, unfortunately. wasn't able to get a balance out of that. Uh, one other thing that you can kind of adjust in terms of its range of motion are the, the spikes back here. Those are kind of nicely hinged there, kind of just naturally the way that they're pinched around the the back, whatever whatever you even call these pieces back here. Shoulder blades, kind of, maybe, but yeah, I, I like the little thing. Not quite as posable as I would prefer, though. Onto the second set here with the Galler Wing, or Galler Wing, or Galler Wing, or however you choose to pronounce it. Again, I do not care about the pronunciation. Whatever works for you is all good. We know what we're talking about because we're looking at it. And uh, it's difficult for me to be objective about the Sparrow here because I really didn't like the thing in-game. The, the Iron version was was okay, was kind of tolerable to me. I understand that they were trying to go for an over-the-top ornament, <laughs> basically, for, for the SRL style. Uh, and, and, you know, they did that, but I don't know. It just didn't ever work for me. As for how Mega has done in converting it to this form, I think they've done a pretty good job. Uh, I think that the color, the base color of the plastic is just a little bit too plasticky and I know it's difficult to capture the the proper color that gives you enough detail in the creases. I think that's really what's missing most here to me uh, is just uh, like s little fine lines to to show you crispness in the corners and everything. You know, this this looks like it's made of plastic, especially those those two large pieces on on the front. Uh, beautiful paint color though. That bright gold is really nice. Not so much the, the the much, much darker gold that's used for the print on the nose piece there. The print itself is good, but it's just, you know, it's much darker and it almost, it almost looks like it's in shadow compared to the rest. And then you also get a different color. Or they use a different color for the, the plastic and paint applications on the, the Titan itself. So at least three different gold colors here. It's, it's not all that bad looking to me. None of them are particularly bad golds. I think that the one that I like the least is the one used on the nose. Two different colors used for the exhausts back here. And again, it's on the same type of stand. So you can lean that around and everything. And, you know, obviously if you had this Sparrow in Destiny 1, if you really loved it and enjoyed it very much, then this is a really good collectible that should bring you some good nostalgia. This Titan figure looks great to me. As a matter of fact, it looks much better to me in person than it does looking at the, the monitor and what the camera sees. The color match between the plastic used for the shoulder armor and the paint used for all the other gold pieces here looks closer in person than it does from your exact angle right now. Like some of these angles around here, it starts to look a little bit more the way it does to me in person. Like around here, see the match is pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's way better than what I'm used to on small toys. Uh, usually there's just too much orange and too much saturation in the gold colors used for molded 
plastic and and mega does have that more orangish color but they didn't use it here they used more of a champagne gold paint applications look really good to me i like the straps on on the legs obviously this is the iron dawn armor set another plain white ghost boo another raised lighter yay yes that one is is definitely worthy has a lot of nostalgia Val uh, value and was a great weapon <laughs> in game for sure some paint applications come all the way around the back for the helmet and the body armor and that print for the mark is fantastic it is so crisp and clean they've come so far from the the first generation of destiny figures There's much better consistency much better level of detail with the, the stamping that they do onto the silicone pieces. Very flexible piece, very easy for it to go wrong. Uh, you have to hold on to it just right in in the jig, but they've they've got it set up, so it's actually working. And you know, those things can move very easily when the stamp comes down and it looks good. So I'm happy with 90% of this, 95%, 90 whatever percent is everything except for the plain ghost. And then a hobgoblin, finally. Yes, Guardian, yes. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. Hobgoblins are distinct and memorable. And even though they're some of the smaller units, they're ones that always make their presence known and you always have to deal with. And I appreciate being able to get this really nice looking, very dirty looking, very heavily washed hobgoblin here. I think it's pretty appropriate. It's not one of the more clean ones, you know, maybe it's been damaged a little bit. It's been in battle for a while. So much better than not having uh, a, a, mat, a, a wash at all, you know. I think that it could have been a little bit lighter, but this looks pretty cool, uh, especially in person. Uh, there's not a whole lot of articulation with the legs here because the whole leg, each leg, is completely solid, and they just have ball joints in board, but then they have the super articulated arms that have as much articulation as the Guardian figures do, so, you know, those go up and down. I mean, it's a little bit limited going up there, but this rotates around and everything, and the hand rotates around as well, and you can bring it out as the appropriate weapon there as well. Head is on a ball joint, so it's able to move around a good amount. They've got the a little print in there, some paint applications on the front. They got the tail on the back, which is a piece that's been around for a long time, but it's an appropriate use of it. I should have gotten more of these. I will definitely go back and get at least one more of these. It's good to have at least a pair just to, to put on display. Yeah, pretty nice. I think the only thing that would have made this better would have been the ability to just extend up the head a little bit for that initial startled look that they get when they're you know when they're they're sleeping basically and then they they initially discover you and they start to go aggro because this one's not able to get the head up quite quite that much but it it's fine I'm, I'm definitely very happy with this thing just looking for things that i don't like about it but overall i like most of it so that's interesting in the avalon courser sparrow set the thing that i like the least or find the least interesting is the sparrow itself the main thing but fortunately they try to make up for that or they help to make up for that with the guardian and the doggy with the second set uh, i personally didn't like the the sparrow in game but i think this is a fine not great but fine representation of it a good build once again and then it comes with a really really good guardian with a good accessory and i love the hobgoblin and look forward to getting more of those hobgoblins for sure that does it for my look at these two sets though thank you very much for watching and i'll continue to look out for any new products as they become available I, again as i always say i don't live in one of those very very rare special places that actually get stuff when it's released so i have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and Sometimes I get lucky, and most of the time I don't. So I'll keep trying, and I'll keep bringing you reviews when I can. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon. Oh, no. <laughs>
Only one minute left. I could not ask for a better victory. Double down. Two for one. A victory well executed. Yes! Three down! Double down. Sound tactics bring victory. Three opponents down. Fantastic work!